Hey, what is going on, YouTube? A.A. Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, we have an informative one for you in today's video. A few people have already let me know about this, but I wanted to kind of just see it for myself. But as you guys can see here, the Gdansk is now in live server testing, at least in the AI format. We have yet to catch Final Boss or Robin in the standard server, but I'm guessing it will come relatively soon as, you know, Wargaming has done this in the past with the Montana and the Zhao and a few other ships where they have put them in the AI server first and then, you know, shortly after they follow into the standard live server there. Again, nothing is confirmed 100%, but considering we haven't got a bureau in like two to three months, I feel like it is well and long overdue. But you guys should know the drill at this point. We see a new ship, we go to the PC wiki, talk about the ship, review the stats a little bit, and theorize how it's going to be implemented into our game. But the Gdansk, the European Tier 10 destroyer of the alternative line, of course, here, Poland aimed to achieve naval superiority through quality rather than quantity, and they designed large destroyers capable of countering light cruisers to this end. In the late 1930s, several projects for such ships were being considered in Gdynia. The Mogador-class destroyers were suitable for the purpose as they were comparable to light cruisers in certain parameters and outmatched them in others. For example, in speed. Had ships of this class been built in France, the destroyers that survived the war would have been re-equipped in the 1950s and 60s with Soviet air defense systems, radar, and torpedoes. Gdansk was first released on day, month, year. Ah, you Europeans do it so silly. But 139 millimeter guns there with a 3.7 second reload. These guns, this, this ship is going to be nasty. But let's talk about the torpedoes and then we'll talk about a few of the things that I, I don't know. Th these ships, I've been playing a lot of these ships recently. You guys saw my video last week and they are very strong. 2x5, 100, what is the quality of the torpedoes here? 533 millimeters with 106 second reload time and an 86 knot speed with a 10 kilometer range there or 9.99 rather. So uh, not, you know, not quite as damaging as the French torpedoes, but with in combination with your guns, torpedoes, and you also get a smoke screen, right? Looking at the pros here, large health pool, good ballistics, fast, main battery reload, fast torpedoes, fast, 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 smoke generator, and surveillance radar consumables in separate slots. And of course, your surveillance radar exceeds concealment range. So as we explained in my uh, Castonis video, the ability to stealth radar, surprise opponents, and with Swirsky's perk. I'm assuming this ship is going to be disgusting in terms of just, you know, first strike advantages on destroyers. Cons, large target, slow turret traverse, only has HE shells, no long range AA, poor agility, poor concealment, and very short surveillance radar, which can actually be, you know, sort of buffed or, or adjusted or, you know, with the perk that we were just talking of. You can get, um, and some people said that they have managed to take their radar or their uh, yeah their radar all the way down to like 2 seconds and then pop their smoke screen and gain an additional 20 seconds as that is the duration of your smoke screen. So I was slightly mistaken on that perk. I thought that once the timer got below a certain number, but I guess that you can get almost a full 30 seconds out of that radar of course if you have a smoke screen available to you. So I think this ship is going to be disgustingly good. Unfortunately, we won't see it for another six months in the game. I have no, again, I've explained this so many times and I almost don't even feel like, you know, bringing up this point because you all know what I'm about to say, but I just don't know what is taking Wargaming so long to introduce legendary tier ships. It's become a meme at this point that the Hindenburg is not in the game. And if you really think about it in terms of how the PC version is set up, now I know that PC and Legends are not the same, but if you look at the tech tree version, the Hindenburg is the tier 10. We don't even have completed tech trees for half of the nations, the Russians, uh, the Germans. I'm sure I'm missing a few out there, but uh, why don't we have these ships in the game, but yet we're getting alternative line destroyers? You know, we have four American battleships. It's just, it's just an absolute meme at this point, the implementation of legendary and high tier ships into the game. That being said, I still really enjoy the game. I think tier seven and I'll even say eight are done really well uh, in terms of overall balance. It's just, 
and of course the Bureau is going to always, Legendary Tier is always going to be memed because of how the Bureau was introduced, but I, I, you know, this, it's like, let us play the game at the highest tier with all of the ships available to us, but we know that, um, Wargaming is always going to do what Wargaming wants to do, which is probably release Hindenburg for a nice easy payment of $200 <laughs> for the Christmas event, and as much money as they can get out of you in order to play the ship two months early, well, they're going to do so. So, I love this game, I just hate how certain, you know, things are done. And again, it's all a way to get you, to keep you enticed, you know, to keep you spending money, but we all know that. And as long as you know that and you can make an informed decision as an adult, then I see no problem with spending money on the game in, in that regard. I just wish that I was able to potentially do it sooner. But that's enough of me ranting and raving. That is the Gdansk. Like I said, you can read more about it. They have a pretty good little, um, you know, uh, PC wiki information page on it as as compared to a few others here But as you can see developed through the split and Castonis play style um, Yeah, this ship is going to be disgusting those those 139 millimeter guns are going to slap destroyers and if you get caught in that that radar um, And that smoke combination with Swarsky's perk then yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be hurting So make sure you target these of course. It also has some strong torpedoes I think the reload is probably pretty balanced for the the, the strength of the torpedoes, but we'll uh We'll see when she's released in uh, six to ten business months. So <laughs> hopefully this comes soon in next update. I, yeah. Beyond that, unless we get some nice meme-worthy ship at tier seven and eight, it's just kind of the same old. But I'm enjoying the competitive version in terms of the Ocean Cup and, and things like that. And you know, playing the Halloween in, in events with you guys. So, but uh, yeah, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for this to come into the game in a couple months? Um, you know, and then wait in the bureau. <laughs> Um, we've probably got to do a whole video on just how bad the Bureau is, but I've already done a few of that. So anyway, love you guys. Have a great day. I'm out. Peace.